Hello. Welcome to the Mastering the Art School Application webinar. Um, we're going to be focusing on visual arts tonight. My name is Ellen Valadares. I'm one of the educational consultants at JRA. And presenting for us tonight is going to be one of our amazing educational consultants, Anne LaFemina. So um, we are going to get started in a couple of minutes. Um, as people are coming in, we'll give you just a couple of minutes to come in. And while you're coming in, please feel free to say hi in the chat and let us know maybe where you're from and what is your visual art form that you're, um, you know, that you focus on. That would be fun to know. And, um, and maybe even what year you're in, in high school. And if you're a parent, you know, share about your, your student. Um, so, and just so you know, also throughout the night, I will be monitoring the chat. So you can put any questions you have in the chat. And um, I will, uh, when Ann takes a little pause, I will give her the questions because she won't be able to see the chat while she's presenting. So um, we will start very shortly. Just give it one more minute or two. So again, if you want to put in the chat where you're from and maybe what your art form is, please feel free. I don't see anything in the chat yet. Hopefully I can see. Oh. There, hi from Florida. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> hi from Florida, mom of a 2026 graduate. Okay, awesome. Welcome. We are in Florida too, so that's great. Okay, so we have some people here now. So in order to write use, you know, not waste any more time. I think I'm going to hand it over to Anne LaFemina to get started. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I am absolutely excited to be here tonight to do this presentation in a two-part series with my colleague, Ellen. Um, my focus this evening is the visual uh, arts part of um, the art applicant. And then Ellen is also next week going to be doing the performing arts. Uh, we are coming to you live from both uh, Facebook and YouTube. And I think it's kind Kind of important for us to share right off the bat. Not only do uh, both Ellen and I have a lot of experience in this uh, with de working with arts applicants, uh, both professionally, but we are also also both parents of um, our children have gone through this process. So we know it very well on both sides. We really very much understand. And especially as Ellen mentioned earlier, a parent just came on board. So we understand sort of how this is trying to navigate this on both sides. So very exciting to, to be able to do this for uh, our audience tonight. So let me start off with a little bit of our agenda for this evening. What are some of the focus and parts and pieces that I will be covering tonight? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to lay out the foundation of navigating the visual arts college admissions process. Now, it's very important to understand that not only do you need to have some sort of breadth and depth of knowledge about applying to college, selecting schools, and all the other sort of nuances of navigating all of this, but then there's the additional aspects of the college admissions mission process, which brings unique challenges, uh, including putting together a portfolio, um, sort of understanding the varying degree options, and the essential steps and considerations for a visual arts applicant. 
you know, when you think about visual arts, this is probably the most significant sort of piece and part that you have to prepare for, and that is the portfolio. So for this evening's presentation, I will do a little bit of a deeper dive into the portfolio and what kinds of things you're going to need to want to develop and have in putting together a, a really strong portfolio for the application process. And finally, this is a part that I'm actually also really excited to talk about this evening. And this is the portfolio or rather a supplement for non-art majors or even artists too, who are thinking about applying for other degree options that are not visual arts. Um, something that we're seeing in a lot more of a holistic review in the college application process is the power of a college portfolio or a supplementary document. Document. So I'm looking at the word portfolio in terms of something that enhances or shows a skill set or something else that demonstrates who you are or the power of adding to your application. And there are a lot of ways um, that colleges are seeking these supplementary documents and ways that you can showcase your talents and skills in college admissions. All right, so let's kind of take a little bit of that deeper dive in art programs and factors to consider. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to just start sort of broadly so before I sort of take you through the steps and sequencing and the things you need to be considerate of, I want to sort of get you to sort of look at the big picture. So when I'm talking about art majors or what would be sort of a degree program within an art major. Here's just a couple of examples of varying degree programs. Everything from animation, um, film, graphic design, game design, photography, textile design, sculpture, jewelry design. These are or museum studies. Um, these are all different types of majors. And obviously this is not a, a, a full cohesive list, but just to sort of give you that uh, window of what I'm talking about when it says, when I talk about visual arts. The other thing I want to do tonight is sort of weave you through uh, how to research and navigate those college requirements as an art applicant. So everything from understanding the application criteria and, and the varying requirements, it would be just fabulous if all art schools, colleges and universities all have the same requirements, but they do not. So trying to figure out what that looks like is very much a starting point. Obviously, going through the portfolio and talking about the unique complexities of putting together a portfolio with varying guidelines. Um, the admissions considerations. So the major that you actually select or determine or that you want to study can impact the admissions process and things that might add more layers to what you want to do or what you or what you want to select in your future. And really the admissions realities, right? So if you are applying as uh, to college as an arts major, you have to understand that this can be depending upon the program that you select or the school that you select, a competitive process, right? You hear about the competitive nature of college admissions. And then when sometimes you take this and you scale it down to a very unique and specific major, that can add to the competitiveness of, of that. Um, I think it's also important to think about flexibility in major selection. So, you know, we, we always hope that you find a program and you stay within that program for all four years or however many years that, that program can be. But it's also really important to sort of think about, um, you know, if you wanted to change your major, what is that going to look like? And there is a little bit of a difference between an art school and a school within a university that may sort of narrow that window in this consideration. 
And then finally, what is the application review? So what are the colleges looking for? What is a little bit more of that process and how are portfolios and you evaluated in that process? Okay, so let's sort of just dive right in now on discovering art schools. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to the selection of where you may want to go, right? So we're just going to start, remember, on that broad pathway again determining where you want to go and where you want to study is really going to sort of drive the train on a lot of uh, sort of like a domino effect of um, how you're going to embrace this experience and what that's going to look like you, you know, look like for you. So for example, there's basically sort of two paths that you can take just sort of, you know, in a big picture. So one would be the true art school journey. Now, this would be a four-year, two-year university or college or program experience where it's very immersive and very specific to the study of art and can host a variety of visual arts majors and can also be a combination of visual arts and performing arts. But this was going to be a very focused program where you're going to have the ability to have sort of that unique and very specific artistic journey. Then there's the traditional college path, right? So that might just be a school such as like an FSU or just a college or a university where you're going to find a um, arts program or a fine arts program within a traditional college or university setting. So sometimes even just trying to define that and starting with that is the first big question that you have to sort of navigate as you go through. Now, what, what do I mean by a dedicated, you know, to art and design? So you may have heard of some names of some of these programs, for example, like a Pratt Institute or New York or School of Visual Arts, New York, Savannah College of Art and Design. These are going to be very specific of that choice one, those art intensive colleges where the bulk of their majors are going to be focused on the visual arts. On the other side of that, these are examples of what I'm talking about as a college of art within a university. So for example, UCF, University of Central Florida, has a school of visual arts and design. So it's a full college experience with athletics and a multitude of clubs and a very large university atmosphere, but has a very specific college of visual arts within that whole university. And so this would be kind of a little bit of a listing and you'd find this maybe in a private liberal arts college, a private in-state college, private out-of-state college, or your state universities. These would be what I'm talking about, the college of art within a university. This next piece that you're going to want to sort of figure out as you're going through the process and something that you want to be keenly aware of is going to be determining, are you wanting to focus on a, going for a degree known as a Bachelor of Arts or a BA? And just so you know, Bachelor of Arts is not necessarily unique to arts. You can get a Bachelor of Arts in a variety of subject areas. But do you want to focus on your degree to be a Bachelor of Arts? or very uniquely so to the arts would be a BFA or a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Now, keep in mind, you can actually find both Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees in both of those immersive programs, uh, as I shared, you know, first and foremost, or in those colleges within uh, those programs within a college or university setting. Now, what is the difference, right? How do you know and what would be best for you in, in the determination of that? Some of this can really be about, again, the degree that you are, you know, aligning yourself with or that you're interested or that you want to study. But just sort of generally so, the Bachelor of Arts is going to be a broader program, meaning that it, what let's say you want to uh, study um, painting, 
So if you were doing a Bachelor of Arts in painting, it probably would be maybe only about a third of your four-year degree program, or maybe even half, you know, sort of mixing it up so, um, would be focused on the study of what your major would be. And then the other half would be focused on general courses. Now, the Bachelor of Arts, um, I find a lot of students really gravitate towards a Bachelor of Arts if they want to study um, an art or in the visual arts area when they want to do a combination degree. And so I think something that's really fabulous that you're finding more and more on college campuses are the center for where they allow you to do these sort of, you know, marrying of two degree programs so that it is possible um, at some colleges to come out with both that painting and maybe business, or maybe the Bachelor of Arts is the right decision for you if you want to have a major in something, but then add a minor or Right nowadays, even students are double minor. Um, so I think the Bachelor of Arts, when you're looking at a visual arts degree, is a great way for you to do kind of that combination study. It keeps you broadly so, but it does give you the courses uh, that you want to for that degree. Now, the opposite of that is going to be the immersive, and that's your Bachelor of Fine Arts. So the Bachelor of Fine Arts, if I'm studying painting, this means that really three quarters of the course load that I'm going to be taking is really going to be centered on training me and getting me ready for my painting or you know, degree. Um, so that is the difference. This in the BFA, you don't really have the wiggle room to add other programs. And if you do, that might mean that you're extending your time maybe through the summers or other kinds of things. But the BFA is really that strong, fine arts, immersive experience. And I think that what's really important and, and something I'll share a little bit further down the road tonight um, is that you mix it up. So sometimes students will determine, well, for this college or for this program, I will apply as a BFA, but at this college and this program, I will apply for a BA. So that's kind of a little bit of a conversation for later, but I think the way to sort of clear that up is to really go to the college website in itself and look what the course sequence is for any program. And you'll get a little bit of a feeling of what the requirements are um, for that degree, whether it's a BFA or a BA. And that can sort of be your barometer for sort of comparing other colleges and determining which schools you want to apply to. And first and foremost, or never forget that it really has to be a program that you feel that is really aligned with your artistic aspirations and interests. Yeah, and then what are your career goals? What is it, what is the vision of what you have for yourself, right? And so isn't that so hard to figure out? Here you might be ninth, 10th grade, 11th grade, you know, do you have the answers at this point? No, you don't. And I think something that's really important when I'm talking with artists and even just applicants in general, um, but even more so, I think, for the artist experience is really when you're starting on this process of embarking, you know, your search for an art college, you really do want to take the time to think about what your artistic goals are and your aspirations, because sometimes in that conversation and clarification with yourself, you may find colleges that might be more in line or have the professors or resources that are more tailored to that kind of conversation of the who you are. I think it's really important to start to think about what are your strengths and how that would look um, in, in looking at any sort of college, um, and especially in the arts. What are the areas that you know that you need to work on and the areas of art that really are inspirational for you? 
And, you know, I've always loved this question because this is what you need to do. And I think it's really hard when you're in high school because you're in groups and you're with your peers and, you know, you kind of think about what everyone is doing or what their path is. And it's, you know, really about sort of honing in and asking yourself again, again, this is a little repetitive, but what is the vision of yourself? And I think that will help you to determine if it's that BA, BFA, if it's that uh, immersive college program, the art school, or if it's the college, fine arts college within a college. But, you know, how do you see yourself immersing in an arts community within your school? And how much of that do you need and then how much do you need in, in relationship to other things that you might want to do? How will you take advantage for opportunities for the collaboration and the mentorship that you're going to be receiving and that artistic exploration? And, you know, and what is that environment? So, you know, it, are you in a rural area? Are you in a suburban area? Those other things are, um, what is your surroundings? Where are people coming from? Um, what are they seeing? What are they seeking? Um, and I think college is also, and, and certainly not even really unique to art school, but, you know, embracing those challenges. It is a challenging um, road because there's a lot of, I think when you're an artist and you're going through this, there's a lot of critiquing. Um, you have to have a little bit of being able to sort of understand that you're putting yourself out there and there's going to be a lot of feedback on your work and how do you see yourself getting through that but being able to nurture your creativity and your passions all in the same environment and i think you know obviously this is going to be something that i'm going to be talking about throughout this evening but you know, again, it's super important, I think, before you make that decision is really exploring a variety of art school programs, you know, thinking about the faculty, their expertise, what is their curriculum development? Remember, I said, go to the websites. And these are things actually talk about, you know, when should I be doing this? Absolutely. I think as early as ninth grade, you can definitely just start getting yourself familiar with these types of things, looking at the resource. And then you have these in the back of your mind as you're going through high school, helping you to clarify that you and what you're seeking. And absolutely. What is the reputation of the college? Uh, what is the percentage of the students that get, you know, hired? Uh, where do they go? Uh, if you think that you're going to go on to graduate school, what does that look like? What does the alumni network work, look like? So these are all sort of focused questions on the arts, but obviously very good questions for just the college application process in general. And here's a little bit of a missed opportunity. I want to give you just a little insight here. Oftentimes when students um, are going to visit colleges, uh, they'll do the general tours and they'll get themselves familiar with the college, but they, um, they don't actually do the deep dive into the arts program. So I really want to encourage you, especially um, those of you who are getting ready to do spring tours or summer tours, call the college, speak to admissions and say, can I speak to so-and-so in the art department and or see if the college itself has any special events related to um, the art school where you can actually go and meet the faculty, the current students, and do that little bit of a, of a more in-depth investigation into the resources that are available to yourself. And I think that's really just taking that college tour and that investigation piece and really bringing that to that you level. Do you have the vision of yourself on that campus? Does that look like, is everybody speaking your language? Does that look right to you? Uh, I think that can be so super helpful. 
Okay, so um, Ellen, before I go on just a little bit more about sort of getting into the whole application process and, and starting on to the portfolio, are there any questions that have come through the chat? I don't see any yet, but um, yeah, please put your questions in there if you have them, and but nothing yet, Anne. Okay, great. So I'm going to go on now. So, you know, here you are, you're an art student or you have a passion for art. You know, this is your, you know, form of expression. You, this is how you communicate with others. Um, you know, you are very inspired by the creativity of it all. And most importantly, you have a desire to learn and grow. And I think that is going to be the most sort of, you know, I think the highlight of where you want to be thinking about as an artist moving through art school. And I, and, and, you know, what are the things that you need to be doing as you're going through this? Now, I want to just mention that, um, Ellen and I have um, lots of follow-up resources for uh, this webinar and where I'm not during the process of the webinar going to give you a full chronological of what you should be doing in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. We do have that for both the visual and performing arts. So if you're looking for a little bit more on where should I be now in my grade level, but I'm going going to just give you um, some things that I think that are wonderful ideas um, in developing and getting yourself ready as an arts applicant. And I think these should be practiced and done throughout all of your years. So yes, as a ninth grader, really starting very early, I think Obviously, you know, the gathering of all of your artwork and starting to look at it and, and, you know, experimenting with different mediums and practicing your skills and just sort of building and building and building as you go through. So super important. One of the biggest components, and I think something that you see in a, a really consistent, you know, level for a lot of arts colleges is um, keeping a sketchbook. And uh, colleges really like to see your observational drawing and your sketches. So I think it's really kind of a fun activity. So as you go through, if you travel, if you're working on an idea, if you're visiting someplace, um, anything that inspires you, sketch it. You know, keep that sketchbook and, and keep a journal. And keep a journal of writing, of your sketches, of your observations. Uh, these are going to be very helpful, uh, as you'll see, as we go through and things that our colleges are going to be looking at. Right. So, of course, going through, obviously, planning out your classes. I, I think part of it is that we want to see that you have a really strong mix of art courses as you're going through or specialized electives that speak to sort of the narrative of where you want to go in your career. But keep in mind that you're also an applicant to college. So I think that obviously having strong courses, having good grades um, is always going to be something that you're going to want to aspire for. But when it comes to the arts, great to have um, either a sequence of programming that shows a, a, a true continuity of art classes or those that speak to maybe a broader level if you're not sure that you really do um, or you're having some experiences with a variety of mediums um, and different introductions to all different kinds of art forms. Okay. This to me, if you heard me just say a little, a few minutes earlier about this journaling. Now, if you're not really, if you're not a journaler, oh, a journaler, oh, if you don't like to journal, <laughs> if you don't like to take the time to write down things, I'm all about tape recording or just voice recording. 
But one of the things you're going to be tasked with as an arts applicant is oftentimes to explain your work. And what I'll tell even ninth graders is starting in this process or 10th graders, as you're starting to sort of go through your pieces and evaluate your work and show your great artwork, you know, things that really highlight your, your strengths, um, I think it's going to be really helpful for you to kind of keep this as a memory log and a, you know, the jotting down of this. And also as an arts applicant, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, getting yourself out there and getting portfolio help. And the one thing that comes sort of really right sort of as a surprise to um, students going through this process is here they are, they're going through their art portfolio and they're struggling when talking about it to sort of explain how they felt when they did that or to recall the mediums that they used or was it an assigned task so i love the idea that either if you do this at the semester or every quarter or every summer take those few pieces and keep the notes of all of this because you're going to need it that's <laughs> super important now those students who I find that are looking and gravitating to the arts, these are some types of extracurriculars and these are very art focused. I want to be perfectly clear that um, I work with a lot of artists that they're also on the lacrosse field. They are um, researchers. They're doing all different kinds of things and it's not completely arts intensive throughout their high school experience, but I do you find that if you're looking at what are some things I could be doing as or having an art interest in building your extracurricular. So obviously anything with clubs or organizations that you can be a part of both at your high school or in your community. You know, nothing can speak more volume than, you know, putting your artwork out there and seeking and finding art competitions and getting your artwork adjudicated. So that is actually great feedback, especially if you're placing or getting some sort of accolades for art competitions. Um, but also you could take your artwork and, you know, maybe you could be that person in your high school that's designing the t-shirt for Spirit Day, or you've created the cover for the school uh, card or emblem. There's lots of times when high schools will have these sort of competitions where their students are tasked to draw the mascot or to do something in an artistic way. And I think those are great opportunities for extracurriculars um, in showcasing your art. Um, Teaching, right? So teaching is so clarifying. Anytime you teach, it's clarifying. It's helping you to, to understand your skill set and gives you that opportunity to mentor back. So if it's if you're going to be a camp counselor or if you're going to start your own little art program for for um, you know elementary age student, great way to sort of hone in your skills, but to give back. Um, and as I said, very clarifying. Oftentimes, so for example, if you know that there's an art fair in your community or in your high school setting up an art fair or getting involved in that, anything being behind the scenes, right? You don't always have to be right in front and center, um, but those are great things that you can do. Public art, aligning yourself with um, art organizations within your community. So if you have museums, volunteer at your local museum. Um, anything where you have things in a public arena is a great way to get yourself out there. And then talking to other artists, professionals in the field that can help to sort of give you 
their journey and share with you their their um, sort of aspirations and how they got to be where they are. And then it's not that uncommon to find a lot of the arts students in the theater department, right? So visual and performing arts do go hand in hand oftentimes. And so you could be that volunteer or that helper, helper to do the set designs or uh, even just putting that together. Right, volunteers say, I'll do the sketch work for that, or costume design, lights, uh, you know, things like that. The lighting design, sometimes they'll bring in the artists to sort of get their opinions for that, or do the promos for that, designing the cover for the, um, for the um, play, for the school play. Lots of ways, and even, even immersing yourself with uh, other family members or professionals, your friends, you know, your best friends, mom or dad, maybe they're in architecture, you can go in and you can volunteer in their office, career shadowing, all ways to build yourself as extracurriculars as an artist. So I'm all about summer, 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 right? I want you to have a great summer. I want you to regroup. You need your little sort of reprieve. But summer is such a great time to immerse yourself in some sort of an art program. And I find that a lot of rising seniors do take advantage of pre-college or summer arts programs, particularly in those final phases of getting their portfolio together. So any sort of outside in the summer community programs, um, portfolio building, and then obviously just the preparation for college and exposure to new perspectives, you can never go wrong with those sort of initiatives. Okay, Ellen, just to gonna take a quick little breather here and is there any questions so far? No questions. You are good to go. Okay, thank you. All right, so obviously as an arts applicant, I think it's really important to remember you, right, because arts applicants or artists nurture art and understandably so but at the same time you have to remember that you are going to have to navigate the traditional application sort of components everywhere from you know having those strong academics um, good course selection um, tests now you may need to have some tests we are finding some colleges are going back to tests if you're applying to a florida state college here our state universities all require test scores um and so gathering letters of recommendation um, and then sort of those extracurriculars, whether they be more art focused or not, these are going to be all things that you're going to want to be cognizant of and start developing as you're going through as an art applicant. Now, one of the most popular platforms for college applications is the Common Application. I'm not going to do a full sort of a window into the Common Application. Um, we have some incredible webinars. My colleague and founder of JRA and um, Score at the Top, Judy Rabinovitz, um, her tutorial on the common application is second to none. Um, she does an amazing job and you can find that. I think Ellen will have that in the chat for you as to uh, where you can go for that. So I definitely think particularly if you are a rising or junior year and then going to be a rising senior, um, Definitely want to alert you to that webinar uh, to learn a little bit more. But this is the common application. And so over a thousand colleges and chances are that the college that you're going to apply to is going to be on the common application. And you will have to be focusing on these six main sections um, that every other traditional applicant will be. In addition, there are the some of those arts dedicated art school programs, they will ask you to apply directly to their website because they are not a part of the common application. And sometimes you'll find a college 
allows you, you know, either or. You can either apply through the Common App or you can apply through another application. Um, the Coalition, not as popular, but certainly something that, you know, they may offer you or directly through their website. What you want to not do is you don't want to ever duplicate. So you're going to pick one if you're given the option. Um, there is no value in doing one over the other. You don't, it's not that you're seen as a better applicant if you do their application direct from for the college, as opposed to doing the more generic ones like the common app. So just know that um, there could be a college or program that you're seeking that's not on the common app. And that just means that you have to go directly to their website to, to do that, to do so. Now, the college essay is always going to be, uh, and I, I really want to sort of discuss this a little bit further in detail and give you a comparison here. But yes, um, writing the Common App essay, the personal statement, the college essay, call it what you will. Um, but this is going to be that compelling narrative uh, of the sort of the you, your voice uh, that is not changed in a college application you still will be asked to more than likely submit that personal statement where you're reflecting on your experiences, where you're sharing your true authentic self. Um, and as I said, we're getting the, 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 the who are you that we don't really see in the application process. And I want you to hold on to this because I'm going to refer back and clarify something about the personal statement just as we go through. Right? You're still going to go through the same process as, you know, things that you'll need to gather going on those campus visits or tours, meeting with reps, uh, going, attending college fairs. You'll still possibly be asked to be putting together a, a high school resume. Um, and, you know, if you are applying to a school such as FSU, they allow you to add your resume. The resume can be a very important document for getting letters of recommendations, for uploading it to your college applications, for your counselor letter of recommendations, Recommendation for scholarships, um, all kinds of uh, a, a great uh, tool in the application process. Um, and interviews. Now, I will say that sometimes co arts colleges in particular will give you the option to come in with your portfolio and discuss your portfolio. And that can be either as a means to help your portfolio review uh, and to get that uh, in shape. Or you could be um, invited to have what's called an alumni interview. So if you apply to a school such as Duke University in their fine arts program or they're more specifically in one of their arts majors programs, um, the uh, admissions may realize that you are um, in an area that has an active alumni association and they may ask you or invite you to have an alumni interview. So even as an artist, you may be coming up with all of these same criteria um, and we'll see how it gets a little bit more layered so as, as the specific arts requirements become revealed. Now, Right. List development is obviously going to be an important part of all of this. As I shared earlier, and look at my list here. This is part of the Common App again. Um, I'm applying to mixed space for lack of a better word, colleges. So I have a mixture of some arts colleges that make sense to me for what I want to study. But I also have some public state universities, some private universities. So um, as I suggested, you may find that you're going to be sort of mixing it up in your um, list. Okay. And here's where I just want to highlight a few sort of differences in what I shared for the arts applicant. Now, artists are often, art applicants are often asked by or within the programs of which they're applying to for an artistic statement. And I, I thought this was really important to highlight for you because 
when students write their common app personal statement and they are very immersed and very involved in art because of you know if that sort of sustains you through high school or it you know on an emotional or creative level and and this is something that you really want a college to know about you and you talk about your journey and how fabulous art has been for you and 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 any of that um when you get to this part of your application and you've done that in your personal statement, oftentimes when I work with artists, they go, oh no, I, that's kind of the art of this artist statement is kind of my personal essay. It's my common app essay. And what do I do now? And so sometimes we have to go back and revisit that. And this is actually a different thing. And remember how I talked to you about that journaling, cataloging, or tape recording of being, of, of, of talking about your artwork and your impressions. Well, that is also the buildup for the artistic statement. So I really sort of wanted to kind of highlight that and 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 give you that tip right off the bat listen we want you you want to have the ability to share as much as you possibly can A, an application although it may seem like oh there's so many questions so much sometimes it can be feel very limiting so when you have that ability to tell one story but then your artistic statement becomes more specific to your degree or what you want to major in, that's like a gift. So really want you to be thinking about that because some of juniors are starting to get ready for the essays. The Common App just announced that the essays are going to be the same. So um, I think it's something really something significant that you want to differentiate. And letters of recommendation, another thing, it's a natural sort of inclination to invite your arts teacher because, right, you've probably spent four years with maybe the same art teacher or really have that great relationship with your art teacher, I hope. Um, and this is a, a sample from the School of Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts um, University. And for their BFA program, they're asking for very specific um, letters of recommendation. And they want one from your art teacher and an academic. And so if you've already done this, generally so, in your application, um, oftentimes, this is another thing we'll say, oh my goodness, I've already shown an art teacher, so now what do I do? Because I only have one. So being very purposeful, I think also with your essay and then also with your recommend recommenders can be very helpful in, in putting this all together. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> I, I so organization for all of this is a must. It's not even just key, it's a must. And, you know, you'll see even next week when Ellen presents her performing arts, because we're starting and you'll see adding that layer of the portfolio and those requirements, uh, I love a good organizer, right? And so I often create and or I, and if I, if it's not me, you should start creating these organizational tools. Um, whatever works best for you, getting a graphic organizer of some sort. And what I'll do is I'll color code it and I'll leave lots of spaces for each. So this is not, you know, 16 colleges. This is one college, two college, three colleges. And we start going through the varying um, requirements. And are we going to be using the common app for this college or for the institutional? And I think this part in and of itself before, and you can really see how I have this outlined and you can put any category you want to. And actually, for the purpose of my screen, oftentimes these go way beyond, you know, JK, LMNOP, right? So of all the things that we want to catalog and keep organized, but the portfolio requirements are huge. And this is really great because what you want to be able to see is overlay 
uh, what colleges have in terms that are in common. And particularly because when you're talking about art schools and colleges and admissions and varying requirements, it, it is key. And it also helps you in trying to identify areas uh, of which you can find things in common and your artistic statement. If it's not being asked of you for uniquely to the college, you can use that again. So um, I just can't tell you enough about, obviously I'm very excited about that, but I think you will find that you will really need this as a survival in this process. Woo. Okay, Ellen, I'm about to go into just getting your portfolio together. Is there any questions? I don't see anything here. So okay. if you have any questions, please put them in the chat, but otherwise okay. you're good. Okay, perfect. All right. So obviously that portfolio is going to be one of the significant standout features, right, for an artist, because typically so, you know, um, you don't need a portfolio, but when it comes to the arts applicant, you will need to have, um, you will be asked to submit some sort of supplementary document typically, um, and that usually is in the form of your portfolio. And you want it to be just like everything else in the application process, your unique perspective, you want to sort of weave a narrative. You want to have your authentic voice even within that portfolio. Now, getting started, these are just some of the, I just sort of uh, extracted some of the things you want to be thinking about. And again, these are things that you could actually start doing as early as ninth, 10th grade. Now, will some of the requirements maybe change a little bit? Yes, but just sort of getting familiar with this. So this does not become an overwhelming and last minute process trying to gather this all in your senior year. So super helpful. You can go into any college website. You can look specifically for their arts program, and then you can research what the requirements are. But so critical and key, right, for even just the application process is really learning solidifying and knowing those deadlines. And sometimes there can be varying deadlines. So there could be the application deadline. There could be the scholarship deadline. There could be the financial aid deadline. There could be the portfolio deadline. There could be varying deadlines within just one application. And you really want to be tuned into that. Again, you want to be certain about what is it that they're seeking within your portfolio. How many pieces? So you'll see some colleges can require even as many as up to 20 pieces of art. That's a lot of gathering and selecting of your pieces. What do they want you to specifically add or not add? I just recently worked with an industrial um, design major who we had to make sure that is part of the portfolio. We had to actually share the size of each um, piece that was shared within the portfolio. So, so not only do we have to be cognizant of the size requirements of how many or what we could put on a page, but we also had to share the size or the proportions of the actual um, object that we were adding to that portfolio. And then obviously those required pieces. And this I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes about the open days to share your portfolio and port uh, or and actually portfolio fairs. So these are really important to sort of gather all this information. Now, I'm going to say this, you know. Although I'm going to talk to you a lot about, you know, having an outstanding portfolio, what that looks like, sharing your best work and, and comprehensively so. I think that the most important part in what admissions looks at in relationship to the major and what you're presenting in your portfolio is that you're showing some of your best work, but you're also showing some of your improvement along the way, the artistic journey, right? Because 
when you go to art school and as you're going through, you need to grow, you need to develop, and you want to perfect your mastery and your skills. And it's very easy to sort of look at the person next to you in art class and go, oh my goodness, like they're putting their portfolio together and they have this and they have that. But you know what? You need to embrace your skill set. So maybe they have something in a skill set that you have not completely mastered. But maybe you have something that they haven't mastered. And I think that really art schools, they really want to see what is your measurable and um, what they can see in terms of your commitment, but your ability to grow. A lot of times art school um, admissions officers will tell me, you know, a lot of students really, they can't really sketch or they can't really draw, you know, and depending on that major and that's okay. Um, but they're looking for the potential of who you are and how you will flourish in that program. So as I get into the sort of the, the nuts and bolts of this, I want you to really understand that it really has to be unique to you and to the college that you're applying to and to the major that you're applying to. So yes, when you're selecting your pieces, you want to show some technical mastery or not even really just full mastery, right? Because if you've mastered it, then you, you don't need to study or train for it. But but just that you your ability, your technical skill set, your technical level. Again, earlier I talked about sketching and direct observation. Definitely are going to want to have some pieces that speak to that. Variety, meaning variety, maybe not so much um, in having all different things, but variety in uh, mediums that you're working with. So I think that's really important to see and focus on that because you can develop a theme. You can have a theme throughout your portfolio. You don't have to, but obviously your portfolio really needs to embrace your unique style and your personality. And, you know, right. And it can be about the things that you value and the things you connect to. And that is sort of developing your theme or showing your unique style and personality. Okay. And then obviously just a little bit more on that technical skill development, kind of that mastery. I did want to clarify that it's really about highlighting your, your individual and your unique artistic proficiency to stand out in your portfolio, in this process, everything should be very unique and specific to you. And I think that is really how you sort of celebrate yourself and get the attention of the admissions in following the directions and guidelines, but embracing that. Right. The range of skills, the versatility, diversity is key, as I discussed. Oh, okay. Now, I think this is also really obviously something that we can't skip over so you're putting your portfolio together remember your portfolio is effectively documenting your work and so therefore how you do that so uh and i'll show you many schools will are seeking the digital upload of your artwork for college um, admissions and submissions but how do you take those pictures and how do you capture that well the person here is with a phone. So, you know, typically we don't, we, we don't recommend that. You know, if you can take your pictures in your high school or write those pre-college programs, but obviously your pictures of your artwork really want to you really want to be able to show your artwork. So this is something that you have to be really aware of. Um, so, so I think it's really important. Every, all, everyone sort of suggests and, and number one guideline is use natural lighting. Okay. So you flash photography is not something that you want to have. So the more natural light that you possibly can have, um, is better, but you don't want to have, you want to be very much aware of having shadows or backgrounds, right? So if you see your picture and you're seeing other elements, one side's darker, one side's lighter, there's a shadow that's not going to be the best 
picture representation of your artwork. You also want to be thinking about what they're asking you. So, you know, when you're cropping your picture or does your picture really represent the colors? So I've had students where they've actually gone back in and adjusted the color of the picture, sort of playing with it a little bit, not to embellish it, but to actually show it in the light in which you have. And here's just sort of like that recommended suggestion. If you are going to be using lights, um, non-natural lights, you really should be having them at this angle where your artwork is at the center, your camera is sort of aligned and you want it to be coming in from this direction. Uh, so again, eliminate the glare. And if you have your artwork framed or framed in, in glass, take it out show your artwork in its natural or original state. Um, so don't think that you have to have everything staged. In fact, you shouldn't. So you should take it out so that this will help eliminate or, or rather share your artwork in its best light. Okay, now let me just sort of, you know, it's kind of one thing for me to talk about this, but I thought it would be a really good idea to actually show you uh, some language and reading the college websites and what are you looking for. So here's um, just a little bit of um, some language from me going and looking at the Rhode Island School of Design as a textiles major, studying, uh, looking and seeking their BFA program. So they're asking to present 12 to 20 examples. They want a you know, your artwork within this to show a full range of your ideas, your experimentation. See, so that's not perfection. That's experimentation, your curiosity, um, your work in any medium, uh, finished or sketched form. Um, and these can be from assigned projects, things you've been asked to do in art classes throughout high school or college program, pre-college programs or, or art classes or those self-directed, you know, um, pieces. Here it is, examples that involve drawing from direct observation. You've heard me talk about that over and over. Um, and then the majority, and this is sort of a little like reading the fine lines, the majority of your portfolio should feature finished pieces. We suggest including some research or prep work in up to three. Now, when they say suggest, I'm, I always take that as, ooh, that's something they really want to say. So um, that means, again, they are asking for up to three, but don't do more than three unfinished pieces. So here's a little bit of what I want to really sort of emphasize at this moment is that if you are uh, going and developing your portfolio and you're putting it together, you if you're not following the directions and following the guidelines, that tells the college you're not following the directions and the guidelines and can be even if you are uh, just this amazing talent, and I'm sure you are, if you're not following what they're asking you for, that's a way for them to say, hmm, they're not following and maybe this is not the right student for, the, for our program. Now, when they say we don't want you to have excessive visual elements or text descriptions, some colleges are very, very strong in exactly what they want you to do. Could be a character count. It could be a word count in terms of describing what your artwork is or adding context to that. Um, but, it, you know, maybe if you are doing some things that are showing a progression or a research, they don't want to have you... Add 
add, you know, an abundance of arrows or other visuals that could take away from your actual art piece. Okay. They also say that you can take one slide and do things with multiple angles or detailed shots. So when I see that sort of that window, when they're explaining that to you, that says to me, you know what, we probably should do one of those, at least have at least one in that portfolio. Okay. Now, this I, I took from Ringling, which I thought was very interesting and something that I, I thought would be helpful for you to be considering um, of those deadlines. Now, if you go into their website where they have their portfolio deadlines and their deadline information, they have this piece called Other Deadline. And if you don't read through the entirety of that um of that um, portal or that, you know, description within that college website, you could find yourself missing something or not aligning yourself correctly to what they're asking you. For example, um, there's only one major in which you can apply for at Ringling College of Art and Design as an early action uh applicant. And so that's typically that early phase of the application uh, deadlines, and that's computer animation. However, every other major is rolling and probably could be rolling through whatever deadline that they do determine. Rolling meaning that as the applications open up, just keep submitting and you submit, and then we will spit out a um, decision kind of within a sequence or time of, you know, time going on. This one, though, does say that, you know, you're thinking you're rolling, but for um, portfolio, but for the um, computer animation, the rolling admissions deadline is January 15th. So that's not so rolling, right? So, oh my goodness. So now I can, I can submit early, right? And I can submit later, but I can't go past the 15th. And if you didn't take the time to sort of think about that, and you ended up just applying, oh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, computer animation major, and I'm rolling, I, I have plenty of time. Well, no, you don't. And then you've missed your opportunity. So, Again, combing through these websites and then putting it on that organization spreadsheet is so super helpful. All right, now I took this from Syracuse University uh, for their film applicants. And here, right in here, is where I'm choosing to focus on that writing submission. And for this, this is not necessarily the artist's statement, but they are asking in 500 words or less. So another statement or type of statement where you're really discussing your film or your, your submitted work, and they want you to very much specifically answer these questions throughout your narrative. That's a supplementary essay or another type of essay. And remember, going back to my conversation about, you know, cataloging everything and writing it down and talking it out, well, here's where that's going to pay off. So how did you make decisions about the style and aesthetics of this work? Well, you could just find out that just by listening to yourself, just do some general ramblings, if nothing else, about, you know, this particular piece that you worked on is going to be something you're just going to plug right in to that essay. And then really, this is a little bit part of that, that um, personal or that artist statement is, you know, kind of. And additionally, so tell us about, you know, your experiences or views and of the world and how you were shaped as an artist. So that's an artist statement, but a little bit of a combination in very much specifically addressing what you've submitted. All right, I want to move on to, you know, we've really talked a lot about that portfolio and what that looks like and getting ready as an applicant. But this to me is one of my favorite things. And I want to just share with you, National Portfolio Day 
or, or finding a portfolio review throughout high school is just something that you must seek out. Um, I happen to live very close to Ringling College, and so um, they actually are one of the college hosts for the National Portfolio Day. And I will share with you the link of where you can learn more about that. Um, but they're kind of like a, a pack of traveling art schools that go throughout, you know, the this country, and um, they allow students to sign up and come and spend the day on the campus. It's great for the college itself because it brings traffic in for you to also see the college, but it allows you to bring your portfolio, your physical hard copy por portfolio, and have it evaluated and you can talk to admissions reps and art personnel and faculty right from that. Um, where you may not be able to travel or have access to these colleges because you're looking at a school in California and you're here in Florida. The Portfolio Day is just an amazing opportunity. You know, um, I have seen students go and get such great feedback. I want to sort of preface, you have to really be in a good state of mind because, you know, they are going to give you some really constructive feedback. And sometimes students are not really prepared on that, um, just to kind of how to handle all that. And then sometimes it can be a little bit of mixed messages because you're moving around from, you know, station to station and talking to different art schools. But it gives you a little bit of a window of how you're connecting and what they're feeling about your artwork. And it's so great to get this. And this is a must do. If you can't do this, I'm going to show you other ways to get help with your portfolio. But I really think that it is a Missed opportunity if you think that you should be doing this on your own. You should be seeking the advice of as many people um, to get the review to, to um, then for the clarifying of how you want to ultimately um, prepare it. Now, I was um, getting on the website of the School of Visual Arts to add some information for this webinar. And so all of a sudden, I just happened to stumble upon this. Join us for a virtual info session and portfolio tips. So oftentimes, you know, you, you wouldn't know this, but, you know, you could call the school and say, hey, I really want to get on some of your webinars um, or when will you be offering or are you going to be part of National Portfolio? Day. Um, also, a school such as um, um, Southern Methodist University, they actually, they are not part of that National Portfolio Day, but their arts department also hosts an art fair for the local colleges that might just be within Texas or regionally so, um, locally so. So there's lots of ways that art schools, art programs are putting themselves out there to help you with this. And I think it's so important to sort of tune into that. So I attended this because I thought this is fabulous, right? I really want to hear what they have to say. And what a great event this was. So they had representatives from different um, departments within each college. So students, students talking about their portfolios and the programs that they're in and how they put that together. And you actually got to see the guidelines and then the admissions personnel were giving their tips and suggestions and showing you um, pieces of artwork and how they want it done. And wow, it was just an amazing presentation. And right, this is something that you should be putting yourself on the list for and taking advantage of.
Additionally, so, right, your art teacher, that's someone that you can always hopefully go to, to get some input, any mentors that you're worked with. I had a, a friend recently tell me um, about how their student went to a comic book fair, but while they were at the comic book fair, just because they were an, an attendee, they actually brought a couple of samples of their artwork. And as they were going through and talking to different comic book artists, they just started chatting and saying, hey, can I just show you a couple of samples of my work? Um, or I really love your work. And can you tell me about where you went to school and what you looked for in art school? So, you know, it doesn't have to be sort of this formal, but just putting yourself out there and getting these reviews to get that constructive feedback, I think is something that everyone should be taking advantage of. So how do colleges or art colleges ask you to submit your work? And I'm just, before I go on to my next slide, I'm just checking in with Ellen real quick to see if there's any questions. I don't see anything. You're good. Okay, great. I'm going to keep going. Now, typically art colleges or schools that have the visual arts components within them in those university or college programs, you're going to find that they work through a, um, a portal or a platform called Slide Room. And I think that if you are, you know, thinking about this um, program um, or becoming an artist or studying art, it's an awesome idea for you to start an account early on. But chances are, if you are creating a portfolio and putting that together, you will be directed to Slide Room where you'll create an account, you'll select the program. So many, many colleges are affiliated. So you'll look or more specifically look for the college in which you're applying to and where you're going to be submitting those materials. And then you'll go ahead and you'll upload the materials. And this is a further clarification. Um, I took this from Wheaton College where um, I've been told what I need need to upload and look at this. Remember I talked about resume. So either an arts related related resume or just your resume can be something that you can optionally so add to the slide room. You will also find instructions to upload and use slide room if you're working with the common application. Um, here's a sample from um, a college, Duke University, uh, where um, it's a do you intend for a particular major to submit a portfolio for, you know, an arts degree. And then you will be directed to the portfolio and instructions. And then from there, you can be further directed to slide room. So that is probably going to be coming across your radar if you are an artist applying to art school programs. The other thing that I wanted to share is that you can be directed again. So for example, as I shared with you, School of Visual Arts is not on the Common App. So just in part of their application process or describing how you will be submitting your work, you're being guided to the um, to the slide room again. Also, I thought this was interesting and kind of for the breadth and depth of your experiences. Suppose you do want to study film and you don't really have a reel. I thought this was really fabulous. The college is allowing you to do a two-part film essay of how you would film something as an alternative. So I... I want to encourage you to not be feeling overwhelmed or to think that if you don't have these catalogs of things, yes, you will probably be tasked more than not, but sometimes a college can be very creative in trying to extrapolate your strengths and helping you to get admitted for a program in more ways than one. All right, now, um, again, next week when Ellen does her um, webinar on um, performing arts majors, you're going to see a lot of this accepted platform. And I want to be perfectly clear, I did not spell that incorrectly. That is actually how that platform is spelled, accepted without the E. And um, there's a little bit of a fine line between um um, visual and performing arts majors when it comes to theater. And some of those majors can be considered 
arts, in visual arts, or performing arts, but you're not a performer. So for example, in theatrical design and technology. So for this application, and if this is something that you're thinking about, you will be directed to accept it. Um, and uh, for example, here's a um, totally perfect example of what I'm talking about for performing arts at Elon. And if I'm applying for that BA in theatrical design and technology, I'm going to be sent to accepted. But here are the different criteria and things that I will be asked. So sometimes for artists where you have that sort of you know, fine line between performing arts or arts within performing arts that are not performing related, you know, this is where you'll be directed to, but you'll still need to submit lots of supplementary information. But I think this is a great opportunity to in showcasing here a video recording. So it doesn't have to be written, which is kind of fun too. Sometimes people are, students are more comfortable with sharing a voice recording or doing something that way, as opposed to writing an additional essay. Right. And this is the perfect segue to remind everybody that if you are enjoying the visual arts presentation that we are hosting this evening, next up this very time next week, my colleague Ellen will be sort of taking you through this same journey that I am on the 13th, starting at 630 p.m., navigating the performing arts admissions. And I just want to sort of conclude my evening by talking to you a little bit more specifically, um, something that I addressed in the beginning of my presentation that I would share as the portfolio as a supplement to your application. Okay, so... Um, you know, this is what's been kind of exciting for me, I think, more sp specifically in working with students or for students in navigating the application process is that, and I'm going to say portfolio, and I'm going to refer to an additional supplement that's going to showcase your talent or your skill or something we don't know about you. So it may not be in the form of a portfolio in the way that you know it to be a portfolio and a big document or uploads, things like that, right? A, a big case carrying it around, I mean, um, or just putting something together in a digital upload. Um, but a portfolio can be something that not only shows your artistic endeavors and particularly for someone who's had arts a lot focused throughout high school but may not be going into a visual arts career i think this could actually add a lot to your application or scientific stem majors um anything that shows your research publication, um, things, competitions, robotics, all these kinds of things you can put together potentially if a college is open to it, a supplementary document or technical proficiency. And I want to show you how this is sort of opened up in the college arena, right? Anything, you know, arts, Students who participate in the arts, I always find your your skill set can be very transferable to so many things, right? Critical thinking, effective communication, creativity, and adaptive and adaptability. All of those are pieces that I think really shine and something that can really you can highlight whether you know uh, you've had an arts background or not. Uh, but let me sort of take you back to where I got into this. I'm going to say maybe 2017, 2018, I became aware of the Zimi platform. And you may know about this. Zimi is a, um, it is a, um, an app and it was developed to bring your college application to life. It was, you know, in recognition that students, you guys are on your phones and um, in that you have your pictures on your phones and your videos on your phones. And it was a platform for students and colleges to have a video presentation as part of your application. And so um, I started working with students on the Zimi platform and it's still there, um, but it kind of really started to help me realize that um, as 
part of the application process, if you have the opportunity to, to include additional means of expressing yourself, and a lot of times this is optionally so, you should really go for it. Um, and I'm going to just show you what I mean by this. So for example, if you were applying to Bowdoin, Bowdoin offers its applicants the option to record a short, spontaneous video response to supplement their application or your application materials. It is completely optional. But here's the thing. First of all, when I hear optional, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm suggesting go for it, um, right? Because you, it, it's it's never going to hurt. And um, it could be that kind of thing where maybe I have a vision of admissions just sort of thinking, what, what else do I want to see? What else do I want to know? And, you know, if you don't add something, then they don't have that additional context. So in here, I'm not going to play this, but Bowdoin actually on their website gives you a full tutorial of, you know, how to do this and the value of adding that. So I think these are sort of the little key nuances in the application process that are sort of portfolio like and should really excite you. I hope that you have the same enthusiasm as I do in helping students to bring this to their applications or for you to bring this to your application. Now, unfortunately, this is college admissions, so no two colleges sort of all have this. But when you see this, you should sort of say to yourself, you know, woohoo, like this is great. Like I can actually figure out a way to add something supplementary of my talent or my skill set. Um, and I think it's good to reflect and say, what, what is that? And what do I want to share? Um, now, Another thing, I took this right from Yale, and this is their language. If you have a substantial and well-developed talent that cannot be conveyed adequately in the rest of your application, you may consider submitting an audio recording, a musical score, an art sample, writing sample, scientific research paper, film, or dance video. Yes, why would you not want to do that, right? And, and so, you know, going through high school, you know, I suggest that you kind of keep a little bit of a folder or, you know, some sort of a cataloging again, um, record of these things, your videos, your prizes, your research papers, your films, your dance videos. And listen, if you don't use them or you don't need them, you don't, you don't need them. You don't use them. But if you do think about how exciting that could be to add that to your application. Now, here's again, language from the colleges. On the application, very college asks, some applicants maintain an online presence that showcase their background, talents, or creativity. If you maintain such a site, copy or paste or put your URL link here. Wow. So if you have put something together that appropriately so that can add to the narrative of your application, right? Not, you know, a half an hour video, but a short something that you want to share. The colleges are allowing for that. And, and again, it's optional. You don't have to, but I always sort of sort of stop students right there and say, what are we going to do here? Because we should be doing something and we should find something and you have something you do. Um, or High Point says, if you would like, paste your personal website link here. So, right, this could be something that you could be working on throughout, you know, your high school career here in putting these things together. Texas Christian University, freedom of expression. So we want to get to know you better. The only limitations are the boundaries of your imagination. This is on the call in the application. Please upload an essay, a poem, a work of art, or a URL that showcases another side of you. And, you know, right, I'm sounding like a broken record, but you don't want to miss this. These are fabulous pieces that can help bring in a holistic review and sort of knowing about these and knowing that you can add these. It's terrific. Okay, well, now I just wanted to even show you a school such as MIT, Creative Portfolios. 
right? So you're thinking this could be very STEM science focused, right? Students who have worked on a significant research project outside of high school classes are welcome to submit the research supplement, whatever, through slide room. And if you've worked on one or more research project, focus on one project that is most significant to you. Or they allow for your maker portfolio, which is an opportunity for students to showcase their technical creativity and so on and so forth. So I don't want you to think that this is just about an art. This is right there. This could be very much focused on that research, on that STEM or something very significantly so. And you have these opportunities in what I'm calling a portfolio or the true supplement of your talents. Okay, so wow, that was a lot of information for the evening, just sort of in review of everything, just sort of reflections and key takeaways that I hope you, you know, sort of took in for the evening. Just, you know, an arts applicant means that you will be having to um, submit additional information anywhere from that portfolio um, or an additional art statement or artistic um, or the essay of the artistic statement, navigating those requirements, knowing the, the varying things, trying to come up with those commonalities in which all of them, right? Because, you know, it's, it's a lot to try to navigate. No two colleges are going to be asking you for the same thing. Really paying attention to the deadlines and the criteria and remembering that, you know, it's not a one stop shopping. It's really going to be about making sure that you're addressing everything that's unique and specific to the college when you're putting together everything in that portfolio. Right. I gave you many suggestions. I hope that you found tonight on that early preparation several times. I said starting in ninth grade. Right. This doesn't have to be junior, sophomore year specific and certainly not senior year specific. Um, and then sort of learning about the different programs in art schools, the BA, the BF, the art schools, art within a university. And then, you know, my sort of spin and enthusiasm on the portfolio, which I'm calling redefined, which maybe you never really thought about because, you know, uh, of how that supplementary document like a portfolio can 100% enhance your application to a college or university. And right, so I'm an educational consultant. And so I always want to leave on the note that, you know, your academic academic record, um, demonstrating your commitment to learning and intellectual curiosity, you know, right, colleges are always looking first and foremost, foremost at your transcript. It's transcript, they value, you know, students who do well in their in classes, and they understand, you know, if you, um, you know, if you, you know, don't have all A's and B's, but, you know, certainly if it is uh, looking at that arts program, you know, who are you and what are you bringing to the table? Because remember, for some colleges, you have to be admitted both to that college in addition to that fine arts program. So, right, that may mean that you might need to have a certain GPA or you might need to have certain courses or, you, you know, academic rigor or those test scores. And I think I'm just going to kind of give a little plug right now because talking about those um, academic records um, in a couple of weeks on uh, March 27th at 630, I am going to be um, hosting a webinar about this very topic about picking your classes um, and aligning them, you know, with college admissions. So um, you'll be hearing a little bit more about that um, if you go to um, any of our um, um, websites. You'll see that that's coming up at the end of March. So um, certainly hope that you will join me that evening. And and I, I think you know this is really where I wanted to end because applying to art school it. It's a, it's a huge commitment. There are so many layers, so much to think about. And there is really a lot of competition. There's competition just applying to college, but there's also a lot of competition just in trying to get into these art school programs. And, you know, listen, 
you know, uh, a decision does not define you and it does not determine your path. You can be successful. There are, you know, programs and, and places for everyone. I think you have to really sort of, you know, prepare yourself for this journey because you're adding all these extra layers on an already intensive um, process that's out there. And so persevere have a positive attitude and know that you will find your journey and you will get to your career goals. Finally, I just wanted to sort of recap some of how you can learn about visual arts programs. I did share that we will have downloads, we will have resources available to you, other webinars, um, that we have a Kathy Hart, my colleague does a great webinar on the essay and Kathy and Ellen, I think in the early, late spring, early summer, we'll be doing an essay a webinar, um, lots of opportunities to learn about how to create those narratives. Um, but that National Portfolio Day, attending college fairs, sometimes you can find that a college will say, we're on the road. So we're going to be in a, a big, maybe major city. So maybe they'll come to Miami, or they'll come to Orlando or New York City. Um, and maybe they'll be at a hotel or some a place where you can go and meet just very specifically with the college. I cannot emphasize enough, a lot of high schools do have reps coming on your campuses. Find out through your guidance counselor, learn about what colleges are coming on your campus. There's it right there, right there. There's no better way to start your, show your interest and start your, um, your journey and learning about colleges and just these very small, right with your own peers in your own high school environment. Again, I talked to you about colleges hosting admission day events or um, they can, or like when I mentioned um, Southern Methodist University when they had their arts portfolio, but also when a college hosts an admissions day, they usually pull out, you know, every department is there and certainly representatives from the art departments will be there. You know, obviously your high school counselor, teacher, mentor are always great ways to learn about colleges. Um, Teen Life's Guide, another thing we'll be adding to this, um, to our list of resources, has a wonderful and fabulous guide to visual arts and performing arts colleges. And Ellen and I have also also put together a listing of summer programs, because if you remember, I did talk to you a little bit about those pre-college programs, and then obviously the resources. And that's where you're going to find them. Here's the links, but you'll see all of this in our downloadable resources following this webinar. Uh, again, here's where you can go to see some of those webinars that I um, shared with you and others. Uh, my colleagues and uh, do a great job of explaining so many elements of this process. So I encourage you to look through the webinar. Those June. And right now, uh, we are offering a GPA checkup where, um, you know, uh, colleges do recalculate your GPA uh, to make an even playing field for, for their evaluation purposes. And you can reach out to us and we will do one of our um, consultants will meet with you and we will look at your transcript and we will recalculate your GPA in the same light as the colleges do and we can talk to you about planning your courses or mapping out the progression and sequence of, of, of suggested ideas tailored to what you think you might want to do in college. Um, and then just kind of giving you just a couple of little tips on positioning, positioning yourself for college admissions. All right, Ellen, so it, um, were there any questions at this point? I don't see any questions, but oh my gosh, you covered so much wonderful information. I know I learned so much. I have put your email also in the chat. So, and it was scrolled on the screen. So hopefully people saw that. Um, and at jraec.com. So please email. And if you have any questions that come up, um, or if you're watching this on a recording, um, definitely send her any of your questions. But Anne 
so much great information and I really loved, I loved it all. And I love, <laughs> especially what you said at the end, just about, you know, resilience and persistence and um, you will find the right place for you. That There is some place for everybody. So I love that. Yeah, we are both passionate, uh, you know, parents of, of, of students loving the arts. We love the arts and, and we had a great time collaborating on this. And I am getting super excited for um, your presentation next week. And thank you so much for being a great co-host for me tonight. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. And yes, looking forward to next week as well. And again, if you guys think of any questions, please email Anne. And thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you and good night. Good night.